All right, hi everyone, bit of an announcement video today. I've just released version eight of the Biogen add-ons. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you through the different features and changes that are in this new version. And then hopefully you might find it interesting enough to pick it up and try it for yourself. So jumping straight in, one of the things I've added is my favorite modifier combination for hard surface modeling. And I'm calling it the hard surface frame style. So I can give you a little demonstration. If I make a plane, bring it out to the side. So I'm just gonna do a little bit of plane modeling here to start with, the kind of thing you might see hard surface modelers do around a sculpt of a helmet or something like that. So I'm gonna get a little bit of curvature going. What this mode does is it adds a kind of subsurf modifier and then solidifies it and kind of bevels it around the edge. But I can demonstrate this to you now because we take this very simple plane, we then press apply style with the hard surface frame mode selected. And then you see what's happened is it's now thickened and we've also mirrored it at the same time. You can then take any points like these and if we connect them to the middle, they will clip together. So we can start getting some really nice smooth frame shapes. And of course, you can also add edge loops if you want to tighten things up a bit. So one of the things I'm sure you can imagine this being useful for is any kind of casing. Imagine like a mech has a joint around the arms and the internal systems want to be protected by some kind of frame. Then this would be a very good style to use for that. And again, like I said, we can clip things together in the middle easily. So you can get some really nice kind of smooth shapes going in a relatively short amount of time. And again, like the other modify styles, we can start from a template if you don't want to make your own plane yourself. So if you press Shift A and then go down to Biogen, Templates, Hard Surface, then there's Hard Surface Frame. Click on that, it will add a plane and it will be mirrored by default. So you can just get working away from there. So even taking a very basic shape like this that took a few seconds to put together, you can imagine this being like the casing for a sci-fi weapon. Now, one quick note about the parameters on the panel to the right here is that if you have the allow mirror Boolean ticked, what it will do is it will first of all check to see if there's an object in the scene that's called world origin and it will detect the object whether or not it has a space in the middle as well. If world origin does exist, then it will make that object the mirror object target, which means if we go back to this one here, you can see that world origin is placed right in the middle here. So any of the mesh geometry being moved around is going to be mirrored using that as the mirror point. However, if we remove this from the scene and then apply it, it will not be set as the mirror target. So basically it will just go around the center point of the mesh. Also for the example I said where if you had like a sculpt of a sci-fi helmet and then you were building kind of geometry around that, um, when you apply the style, the solidify modifier might be pushing the geometry the wrong way. So I've put a quick button here that says invert solidify. And by clicking this, it will just swap around the direction that the geometry is coming off of the plane. You might notice the side panels here looking a bit different. We have these scattering techniques here where they used to exist on the shift A menu under Biogen. Uh, they make a bit more sense here because these techniques are making use of objects from collections in the outliner rather than creating something from scratch. Now I'm going to explain that a bit more in a minute. You might also notice that cubic and spherical field generators have also been placed in the generation panel up here now because they make a bit more sense creating something from nothing. But the real time that was spent on this add-on in this version is down here in the scene properties. There never used to be a scene properties panel here but I've put one in now, and this is where you're going to go to import template content for the structural generators. Now, if you remember, if you've been around for a while, I've done a bunch of different scripts for generating different types of objects in Blender. There was the random weapon generator, then the mech generator, then the space station generator, and then there was the city scattering tools. The code to make those systems work was put into Biogen in version six, but to actually make a blend file that would make use of those operations properly required quite an in-depth understanding. And I wrote some documentation on curtishold.wiki, but it was still quite a convoluted process. So what I've done here is inside of Biogen now, version eight, I've packaged in a bunch of simplified templates that will automatically set your scene up for those generators. So for example, if I wanted to make my own kind of space station style branch generation, I would come down here into the scene properties panel under Biogen, under generation algorithms, because there are drop downs here, I can click import space station template. Now, if you watch the scene collection up here, if, when I click that, it imports all of these new collections here. And all of these categories are different parts of what would be associated with the branched algorithm. So basically, we have all the different categorical parts of a space station now imported. But these are just template pieces. Then I can click the branch generation operation. And in the bottom left, notice that it brings up the properties panel, you might need to click to expand that yourself, then I can take enable generation. And here we go, it starts. If I scrub the seed value along, you can see that it's now taking that template content that's been imported. And it's trying to generate some kind of space station like shape. The results of these are stored in the generation result collection. And if you want to clear these out quickly, you can always press the clear generation result button and it will clear out that collection. 
Now all of these template objects that were imported are hidden by default, but you can easily go and make them visible in the viewport and then go and replace them with your own models instead. Any models you place in these collections will then be included in the generation procedure. So now you don't need to go out into any other files, you don't need to look at the original space station generator, you can just press that one button and it will set up all of the collections for you, import a little bit of template content just so you know where to place your own models. So the space station is a template I have for the branch generation algorithm, but the layered generation is slightly more complex because it can support a limitless number of collections. Now there are two templates you can choose from here, the mech and the weapon, which goes back to the previous projects I made. We'll take a look at the weapon one quickly. If I import that, you can see there's a generator underscore weapon collection with uh, parts, body, barrel, and detail. So only three collections for parts. If I press the layer generation button, bring up the properties and enable generation, you can see that a weapon has spawned and we can scrub the seed value along. Now there's only a few parts included here, so obviously there's not gonna be that much variation. But the thing that makes the layered generation more complex, even though it's got fewer properties, is because you can use a JSON file embedded inside of Blender to basically describe how the procedure should run. Now, if you're only generating simple structures, then you don't really need to worry about this. But when importing the template, it automatically imports this config file for you. So it will run properly and you don't need to make it yourself. So those are the two things that are imported when you're importing a template like this, the collections with the meshes and the config file. Going back again, I can import the mech template. This one is probably the most complex out of all of them. Uh, you can see that we've got a bunch of arrows here pointing around. These are the position reference objects. A note about these is that they should always be visible in the viewport, the position reference objects, but you can hide them by ticking the hide in viewport button. If they're not active in the viewport, then Bygen will have trouble assigning the positions of different meshes. So if I press layer generation now, go into the properties and enable that. There's a very, very basic low poly kind of template content going on here. And there's only enough variation in these template objects to show that the positions of parent objects will decide the position of child objects. So you can scrub that along and just see how it works. Again, we can open up the text editor and see that there's a config file that's been imported here. And you can go into the outliner, add your own models to the collections and replace the old ones there. Now you might think, well, what does this mean for the other products that I've made in the past? The make generator, the space station generator, and all things like that. Well, they're all still compatible with Biogen, but they contain all of the special artwork that I made for those generators. And I can expand to them over time as well. Anyway, a couple more demonstrations to look at here in the properties menu. We have a couple of templates for the city scattering technique. So if we click on import city circular, it will import collections again. And then we can run the city scatter circular operation. And then aha, a city appears. And again, we can adjust properties here, manage the seed, reduce the max number of buildings. I'll put it down to 100, adjust the radius. There's proximity detection as well, so buildings don't overlap. So basically, again, you don't have to go through the hassle of setting up all the collections yourself just to try and get it to work, because I know that's frustrating. You can just import the template content, and then it's there. It's ready for you to modify and add your own content to. And lastly, we have the import city rectangular mode, which is a lot more simple. So if we run that operation, here we go. We can adjust the X and Y size the distance between cells, and that's pretty much it. So you have these options available to you now. So those are the main features that were added to this version of Biogen. It's not as much as previous versions, but I'm basically trying to get back into the groove of making things for it. There have been an important collection of behind the scenes changes to the code base, basically to make it a bit more organized and easier to make stuff for in the future. I've also recently been doing experiments with Python interaction with geometry nodes, basically simplifying how you can build geometry nodes node trees using Python. And I got some pretty cool results with that. And you know how I like simplifying things for people, which is why I have my easy BPY project for simplifying the use of the Blender API for Python in Blender. One of the reasons for playing with geometry nodes in this way is to see whether there would be any good potential for integrations with Biogen to make all kinds of new modifier styles and to come up with some complex new libraries based on geometry nodes trees. Ultimately though, I've come to the conclusion that geometry nodes as a feature is not quite ready for it yet. From the perspective of making parametric modeling tools, it's a bit too difficult to get actual face data. It's easy to get like vertex data and points in geometry nodes, but a bit too difficult to get faces and modify those appropriately. Also, as far as I can tell, not all modifier types are supported in geometry nodes yet, which makes it a bit tedious when trying to recreate styles that I've made on the modifier stack. So that's why in this version, I have focused on cleaning up the code base, working on making the usability of these structural generators a bit nicer, and adding my favorite hard service style. More will come in the future. So if you're interested in giving this a try, maybe for the first time, maybe you want to update from a previous version, then uh, feel free to get it using the links below. It's available on GitHub, Gumroad, and ArtStation for free, but Blender Market for $1. And if you do get it and you find it useful, or you just want to support my work, then please consider leaving a donation, because it really does help to keep all the projects going. 
So give it a try, have fun, thanks for watching, and I will see you next time.